American Farmland Trust and its partners are developing a new and innovative model to reduce nutrient and soil sediment runoff on leased farmland in the Great Lakes region. By engaging women landowners, their operators, and farm retailers, this team is expanding the use of conservation practices to improve soil health and reduce runoff. These videos document the experiences of the women landowners and their tenant operators in early demonstrations in Ohio and New York. My relationship to the farm, I became an owner in it on paper in 2013. Uh, from age 12 until 25, I was just an employee. My grandpa and dad owned the operation and I did farm work after school and I did anything and everything I could think of. My primary goal for owning my land is to actually own it someday and not with a mortgage on it or the bank's name involved. We've dealt with that enough the last few years and know that that's not a long-term goal for us. My goal to own the farm land free and clear is the sense of peace and freedom to do what I want with it which basically is what we're doing now. Uh, we're being good stewards of the land. We were left. Uh, we're only here for a short time, so we want it to be in good shape or better shape than how we found it. Our operation is diverse, and it's getting more diverse every year, which I think is a good thing to stay sustainable in the tight economics of farming. We farm about 2,300 acres total. Uh, 400 of it next year is hoping to be hay as long as it makes it through the winter. Probably 200 wheat and the rest will be a 50-50 mix between corn and beans. Conservation practices is pretty much what we do all the time on all the acres. Uh, crop rotation is a big part of that. Cover crops are a big part of it. I don't think there was but more than 100 acres last year that went without a cover crop going into the winter of 2019. We do a lot of rye. Uh, the rye then gets killed in the spring and baled and then we put beans behind it. We've also been approved in the last three years for two equip contracts through the NRCS office totaling about three hundred and thirty thousand dollars which has been used to implement variable rate technology for fertilizer nutrient management plans for each farm, cover crops, water control structures, which we have nine of those now installed on various locations. And uh, that funding is there and available for anybody to get a hold of, but you actually have to put a little effort in to get it. Uh, the management part is a challenge. And by that, I mean managing when you plant the cover crop and when you terminate the cover crop. Being prepared for a higher level of management would be something to keep in mind when thinking about doing the conservation practices, but start slow. If you're not sure you like it or uh, not sure it's going to be an every acre thing, just pick out a 40 acre farm and try it for one year. We started probably six or seven years ago and it started at 10% of the operation, then 20, 30, and now we're up to 80%. Communication is the only way things get done. Just remember this, it actually started with my grandpa. He was diagnosed with leukemia in 2010 and he couldn't think of a way to tell all the landowners what was going on what the future of the farm was going to look like. And I said, well, Grandpa, let's send him a letter and tell him what's going on. So we sat in the office at my grandma's house right next door uh, and drafted up this letter explaining his situation, the fact that my dad and I were still going to be involved in the farm and keep it going regardless of what happened with his health. And uh, it actually has turned into an annual thing where send it to each one of the landowners in November with their rent check. Uh, each year we include six to ten pictures also of different things we've done throughout the year so they can put a name to a face and uh, a connection to whatever we're working on. 
whether it's cover crops or baling hay or working ground or combining. Uh, some of our landowners are removed from the farm and they're not even living in the state, but yet that line of communication is open for them to ask questions about and for us to tell our story. Talking on the phone, talking on the radio, sending the newsletter and talking in person is is just as important as planting the fields and doing the work. So we actually have about 27 or 28 landowners that we pay rent to every year and send the newsletter to every year. 75% of them are females, uh, either inherited the land or are widowed at this point in time. And uh, that's the best thing I learned in high school was torching an FFA and talking to women. So it's coming in very handy now. I think you should sit for a few minutes and think about what it's like to be in their shoes. Uh, think about what it's like to come from their generation. Talk to them like they are a friend. They're important. They, they mean something to the operation. And get them involved as a team member even. Uh, using those, those uh, tips will go a long way.